Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and we are working in this series on the chapter 3 exercises group B and uh, we finished in the last video working on problem uh, 31 so let me get to I'm, I'm sorry 32 so let me get to 33 here okay now um, before we get started, I'm not going to go through the normal spiel of watching the, uh, the videos again. If you don't understand something, and contact any instructor. But I will say this, that um, uh, for, these, um, for this problem here, um, we're making, you know, again, common adjusting journal entries. And, and in the last video, I had explained about association. You know, if you do enough of these problems, you, you know, you... Uh, you become to understand the process of going through it and it's just a matter of changing the variables right so as I work through this problem I'm not going to spend as much time as I did in the last as I did in the last problem which is 3-32 if you don't understand how to make these entries go back and watch exercise 3-32 okay um, e 3-32 because 32b because I go into kind of a lot of depth on how to make these common ent entries. So all we really need to do here is just be kind of like calculating the amounts that we need to use in order to make the entries because the entries are going to be generally the same. Okay. So again, if you're not understanding how to, if you don't, I'm going to skip over how to make the entries, you know, going through it in in-depth detail. And if you don't get, if you're not getting it, then go back to the previous video on 3-32. Okay. All right. So it says here, the accounting records of activities unlimited included the following unadjusted balances at September 30th. So I have a receivable, supp supplies, salary payable, blah, blah, blah. The following data pertains to September 30 adjusting entries. So we have to have these adjusting entries. Record the adjustments, then post them to the T accounts, labeling each adjustment by letter and then calculate each account's uh, adjusted balance. Okay, so what we have to do is set up T accounts using these balances, right? All right, so uh, new slide here. All right, so I have accounts receivable, and it had a balance of 2100. Uh, then I had supplies, and that had a balance of 900. And then I had salaries payable, and that had a balance of 980. Um, and I had unearned service revenue, and that had a balance of 750. And then I had service revenue. And that had a balance of 4,100. Then I had uh, salaries expense um, with the balance of 1850. And I have a supplies expense with a um, with no balance. Okay. So, um, and just as a, while I was uh, writing this, the thought occurred to me that you should already know what the normal balance is, all right? So you should know whether it goes on a debit side or a credit side, okay? Um, you know, at this point in your education, when, you know, it says accounts receivable 2100. Well, you should know that that's a debit for 2100, okay? If you don't know that by now, then go back to your in, uh, introductory videos and, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, watch those again about how to, you know, what's the normal balance of an asset, liability, revenue, expense, and equity accounts. Okay. All right. So as you can see, you know, as we move on here, um, you know, things that you've, that you should know by this time, I'm not going to be covering again. Okay. If you're not getting that uh, aspect of it, go back and watch, uh, you know, your introductory videos and go back and work through the uh, previous homework problems in order to be able to lay the foundation for it because by now this stuff should be uh, kind of rote meaning uh, you should know it you know almost by heart okay all right so 
let's see here. Okay, so those were those were the balances um, at September 30th. Now we have to make these entries. So I have uh, a service revenue, you know, and it's accrued. All right, so um, since it's service revenue, um, I'm going to credit service revenue for 16.50, and that means I debit something else and. Since it's revenue, and the word, the key word here is accrued. Okay, meaning it's it's you know we've you know earned it, but it hasn't been paid to us yet. Um, that's going to be an accounts receivable for 1650. Right now we have to post that amount, those amounts to our ledger accounts. So uh, service revenue gets uh, 1650 as a credit, and my accounts receivable gets 1650 as a debit. Okay, so that's my adjusting entry. And so really this here problem is, uh, you know, uh, yes, you do have to, uh, whoops, you do have to know how to make these entries. And that's the important part, but the rest of it is just posting into the ledger accounts and then getting the balance in the accounts. So B here is unearned service revenue that has been earned. All right, so if our service revenue has been earned, we're going to decrease our unearned service revenue. So that means we're going to debit it because why the normal balance of the unearned service revenue right right here is 750. That's a credit. Well we're decreasing that so we need to debit unearned service revenue by 350 and we credit service revenue for 350 and post those to the accounts. So um, we're going to debit 350 and we're going to credit 350. Oops, wrong way. All right, so that's B. C, supplies on hand. Okay, so our supplies on hand. Um, if we had 900 and now we only have 240, that means our supplies decreased. All right, so when we, you know if our supplies is a debit of 900 and we're decreasing it, that means we need to credit supplies by 240. I'm sorry, the difference between 900 and 240. 900 less 240 is uh, $660. So that's a credit for 660. And debits equal credits. So we can look at our accounts and see we have a supplies expense account. So we're going to use the supplies expense for 660. So that's our adjusting entry. And so we credit supplies for 660 and we debit supplies expense for 660. And the thought just occurred to me that I hear a lot of students say, well, my debits don't equal my credits when I create my balances. Well, notice that all I'm, you know, all I'm doing is just transferring information. And as long as I'm writing the, the, the correct number, meaning I didn't write 606 here, okay? I wrote the 660, which is what it's supposed to be. And I made sure that I wrote it on the correct side, whether it's the debit side or the credit side. And... If I put a debit somewhere, I have to put a credit somewhere else. If, if you're doing that, then the only reason why you should be making, the only reason why you would make a mistake is if you're doing the math incorrect. Okay, in other words, like if I was going to add up service revenue and I, revenue here, I made a mistake. All right, well then, yeah, that's going to throw your debits and credits off. Um, but, you know, a lot of students struggle with, you know, their math, you know, with uh, their balances, you know, debits not equaling credits. And, you know, basically it's one of two things. It's either doing the, you know, relatively simple, you know, transferring of information, just writing it right in the same spot. And that's just a matter of uh, focus and concentration of doing that or making sure that you do the math right. So don't do the math just one time. Do the math several times in order to make sure that the, uh, the math is correct. All right, so last here is salaries owed to employees. Okay, so... Um, if we owe salaries to employees, 
that's a liability because we owe it. And if we look at our liability accounts, you know, we see we have a salary payable here, right? right so um, I would, I'm increasing that amount, and we know that when since salary payable is a liability, and we increase liabilities on the credit side, I'm going to credit salaries payable for 980, and then I debit something else. Well, you know, since I'm paying salaries, I can look at my expense and see I have a salary expense account. And so I'm going to debit salary expense for 980. And so that's my adjusting journal entry. And so now when I go to post it, I credit salaries payable for 980. And I debit salary expense for 980. So that's that entry. And the last thing we have to do is calculate each account's uh, balance. So doing the math, right? Um, 2100 and 1650 gives us 3750. The difference between these two is a debit of 240. This is 1960 difference between these two is 400 on the credit side right remember so I have I have 750 less 350 is 400 okay and which is greater well the credit is greater so that means I have a credit for the 400 I put it on the credit side uh, service revenue Okay, so the total of all of those is 6,100. Uh, salary expense, the total of that is 1850 and 980 is 2830. And supplies expense is 660. And so those are the balances in the accounts. Okay, and that's it for uh, that particular problem. Okay, um, I'm going to do the next problem in the next video. All right, see you then.